This is a quick training video for maneuvering boards to get you ready for your service-wide exam or end of course test as the case may be. The first thing to do is know the different parts of the maneuvering board. There are different scales on the maneuvering board. You should always keep those in mind when you're doing the problems. Preferably stay on the same scale. Remember the one-to-one -one scale is the normal scale and each tick mark is a mile. The second big thing is the nomogram at the bottom of the maneuvering board. Take the time to read those instructions. But basically it's a calculator for you. If you know time, distance, or speed, uh, you can figure out the third value that you're missing if you know any of the two of them. <coughs> the next thing you want to do is set up the maneuvering board for your success so you don't forget anything during the test when you're stressed out. Always write down in the columns CPA, bearing range and time. Think of an acronym like can puppies and babies really tango? Then write down a picture of the triangle. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but that way you can remember the sides for what you're looking for. <coughs> then write down SRM and DRM. Do reality made stars rate money? Direction of relative motion and speed of relative motion. And then finally, CS and R. Cow smell ridiculous for course speed and rules of the road. Make up your own acronyms if you need to, but it's a way to remember what you need to write down. <coughs> There's two different worlds in the milk board. The first one is you're gonna calculate CPA, and then the second world is you're gonna do the triangle thing that calculates the course and speed of the contact. You have to keep those two worlds separately. Uh, you have to keep them separate or you're gonna get yourself confused. Always remember that. First thing to do, plot yourself. Own ship's course is 040 at six knots. We're on a one-to-one -one scale. That's the E to R vector. Make sure you label it. Next thing we're going to do is plot the uh, contact off the radar. As you can see, I have them uh, just off the, the port side there. Three different contacts. We started the clock at, at uh, 1200, so I have plots for minute zero, minute three, and minute six. <coughs> the more accurate you are with these, the better your results are going to come out. I'm using a fat pencil, so your results may be slightly different. Okay, once you have all three um, tick marks plotted, draw that line out to infinity, and that's your CPA line. The contact is going to continue to travel down that line on the radar in the real world unless one of you changes course. So remember you're in the CPA world, not the triangle world. Now to determine CPA, you have to simply find out where this line comes closest to the origin, or the E. So an easy way to do it is to find the perpendicular off that line that corresponds with the E line. Make a tick mark and note the bearing. And now you have two pieces of information, the CPA bearing which in this case is 031, and the CPA range, which in this case is 2.4 nautical miles. Remember, your results may be slightly different. <coughs> this information you can use uh, you know, in real life to determine if you have to call the captain, if you have a risk of collision, stuff like that. Um, for test purposes, uh, you need those two pieces of information. When you're determining the CPA time, there's two ways to do it. If the question is a really quick one that just asks for time, an easy way to, ch to check your answer is to take your dividers and just count off. Each little tick is, you know, six minutes in this case, so 6, 12, 18, 24, etc., down to the final. And you can get a pretty good idea of what the CPA time is going to be. I discourage you from doing that. You should really use the uh, nomogram if you can. But if you forget, and that's the only way you can, then do it. But the speed nomogram, if you know time, distance, you can determine speed, etc. In this case, we know the contact covered a certain distance. Um, over six minutes, in this case 1200 yards in six minutes, so therefore his speed of relative motion is six knots. So what you do is you take uh, the six minutes and the 1200 yards that he covered, bring it down to the nomogram, connect the dots, and whatever's left is his speed of relative motion, which is an intermediate step, but you can write it down in the right-hand column. So we determine that the contact speed of relative motion is six knots in this case. So that's not his true speed, it's just what he's doing relative to you since you're both moving. So make sure you write that down in the column. And now we use that 
data to determine the actual time to CPA. So given that he's going six knots relative to you, and he still has a certain distance to cover, which in this case is six miles remaining, you can now use the nomogram to determine how long it's going to take him to do that. So again, we measure a distance, we come up with, he's got six miles to go until he gets to CPA. We put a tick mark on that for the distance. We already know he's going six knots, so therefore it's going to take him 60 minutes to cover that distance. So your answer is sometimes 60 minutes, but not necessarily. It's going to cover 60 minutes from minute 06 until CPA. So technically, um, the time would be 66 minutes, or if we started at 1200, 13.06. Just make sure you're careful about those calculations. Now your CPA determination is done. One world is complete. You're going to move on to triangle world now and remember that they are different. <clears throat> We've already written down the ER vector from before. Next thing to do is an RM vector. And the way to get RM vector is to use his direction of relative motion, which is an intermediate step. Basically you take his CPA line, bring it to the origin, and determine that it is in this case 120 degrees true. A lot of people skip that and just parallel the CPA line up to the M point, which is fine, but this is the correct way to do it. So from the M point, you plot something equal to his direction of relative motion and his speed of relative motion. In this case, it's 120 degrees true. Again, that's parallel to his CPA line from before. And how far do you measure it out? You measure it out six knots, your speed of relative motion, or six miles in this case. A lot of people get hung up there, so make sure you pay attention. Why six miles? Because we determined that he was covering um, his CPA line at a rate of six miles relative to us. That's not his speed, it's just the relative motion between the two vessels. So now you've got two legs of the triangle, simply connect the dots from E to M, and that's his true course and speed. E to M is them, and it's from E to M, not backwards. So in this case, he's doing 080 degrees true at nine knots. Remember, your results may be a little bit different because of my fat pencil. So we can write down his course and speed, and then you can use that information to determine a risk of collision uh, or rules of the road situation as the question dictates. Remember, it's from E to R, or from E to M, I'm sorry. So 080 at nine knots. Next thing you should do is really draw out the little vessels to help you determine it. So take his true course and speed, bring it back to the six minute um, contact point, draw a vessel. Draw yourself on the E to R line along your course and speed. And now you can get a picture of how the situations are moving. So you're a crossing situation, you're the stand on, assuming they're both power driven vessels and there was risk of collision, which in this case there probably wasn't. Good work. Okay, let's try one on your own in this case. Again, you have to embrace the maneuvering boards. Again, always write down things in the column to help you remember. CPA bearing range and time, ERM triangle, speed of relative motion and direction of relative motion. Finally, course speed and rules of the road. First thing to do is to plot yourself. We're going to use a 2 to 1 scale in this case because we're going 180 at 12 knots. Try and keep the scales the same as best you can. Technically, you can use two different scales if you have to one in the CPA world, one in the triangle world, but it's usually a bad idea to do that if you're a rookie. <coughs> so once we've plotted ourselves out, we plot the contact that we get off the radar. In this case, he's at bearing 220, and he's closing on us, so he's a CBDR contact. Remember, the rules of the road define risk of collision as a contact that has uh, little change in bearing. So in this case, he's CBDR. You know his bearing to CPA is 220, whatever he's right at. His range to CPA will be zero. Now we determine the time to CPA. Again, two ways to do it. If you have to do it quickly, you can use the dividers and just count off, but the better way to do it is to use the nomogram. Determine that he's he covered... Uh, 
one mile in six minutes. So therefore, his relative speed is 10 knots. Now figure out how far he has left to go, which in this case is 11 miles. And at 10 knots, he's going to cover 11 miles in 70 minutes per the nomogram. So your answer for CPA time is going to be 70 minutes from minute 06 or minute 76 or 1316 if you started at 1200. Again, pay attention to that calculation because chances are two out of your four answers are going to be very close. Okay, now we're moving into the triangle world. Again, we've already plotted E to R. Next thing we need to do is the R to M vector. So to determine that, we need to determine his direction of relative motion, uh, which in this case is about 0, 0,40. 0. We already did his speed of relative motion, so we parallel out the CPA line to R, draw it out in the same direction, and how long do you draw it? You draw it the length of the speed of relative motion, which in this case was uh, 10 knots. Remember, you're on the 2 to 1 scale. <coughs> Whatever's left is his E to M vector, is his course and speed. So in this case, it's about 125 at 8.1 knots. Remember, your answers might be a little bit different because I had a fat pencil. Now take the time to draw out your little ships and determine your rules of the road situation if you have to. So as you can see, in this case we're in a crossing situation, but you are the giveaway vessel, so the proper uh, action is to slow down or more preferably alter course to starboard. Good luck.